Shukri. In Zoom, Dr. Shukri, can you hear me? Yes. Assalamualaikum. Yes, Dr. Mira. I'm ready. Oh, Alhamdulillah. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Shukri. And thank you so much, everyone. Okay. So, Welcome. Dr. Shukri, the session is yours. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Dr. Mira. So, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, let me just share my screen to, every, to everyone first. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, can everyone hear me clearly? I know you cannot answer because you are all muted. But <laughs> and I'm trying to see if everyone can see me clearly and can hear me clearly. Yes, I can see you and I can hear you. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. Okay. All right. So let us start. We can start now. Um, uh, Welcome, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, friends, colleagues, uh, and uh, guests from outside the university. All right, so my uh, my name is Muhammad Shukri Nordin. I'm uh, with the Kuliah of Education. And today I'll be sharing uh, some of what I know on how to uh, prepare, um, how to design a simple and effective uh, online learning experience for your students, given the uh, circumstances that we are now. All right. so. Uh, as you can see, uh, the subtitle of my uh, presentation is uh, Unseen Face to Face. Uh, the, what we are facing now is so sudden that it's, I know it's a bit difficult for everyone to uh, digest what is happening and everyone is still learning and relearning on how to handle this online learning at, uh, experience both for you as well as for your students, all right? By the way, uh, should you have any question due to my presentation, you can, uh, you're welcome to ask, just go to the link above my slides. Okay, you can see there's slides.app.go, uh, so and so. Um, you can ask the question there, and inshallah, I will try to answer as many as possible given the time that we are given, all right? So coming back to what I, said just now, um, uh, we are now in the midst of working uh, away from the traditional method of teaching and learning. Okay, it is becoming a new norm for us now, at least until the end of the year. So uh, it's a bit difficult to move away from face to face. Okay. And now, the role currently, as of now, have been reversed. Okay, where now teachers are becoming learners. We are all learning how to handle this new experience that is coming to us. Um, students are now the leaders where they lead. Uh, we need to cater to their needs in teaching and learning. And many teachers out there uh, in all sectors of education are now relearning on how to teach. Okay, using uh, what is uh, available to us now. And this uh, basically means not a face-to-face -face option as of now. Okay. So it is time now for us to uh, transform Okay, our approach from face-to-face. -face. We have to now unsee the face-to-face -face options and we have to break that norm into a new norm where I think we're losing your voice. Okay, so please uh, wait uh, uh, for a while. Maybe he's cannot, disconnected. We cannot hear anymore. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, sure. Sure, inshallah. I think maybe there's uh, internet connection problems. Please let's just wait for a few minutes. Okay. Uh, 
Halo Datuk Sipriani. Halo Datuk Sipriani. Halo. Yeah, I think we lost Hello. you a few minutes ago. Yes. So if you yes, we we got we got cut off. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, let me just re reconnect. Um, I'm reconnected just now. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Let me just uh, restart everything back. Okay. Okay. Dr. Mira, if you can tell me uh where did I where did you lost me just now? Um still in the first slide. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> this slide? Um no, it's still in the title slide, I think. Oh, okay. All right. My apologies, everyone. Let me just restart back. Uh, with the title of my presentation. So I was talking about how, uh, given the circumstances that we are now in, we have to somehow unsee face-to-face -face and uh, redesign or re redo our approach to teaching and learning. So basically now the rules have been reversed where teachers now are becoming learners. Okay, all of us, everyone out there are trying to learn new approach, okay, new uh, ways to effectively deliver content to your students, effectively uh, prepare activities for your students as well as effectively assess your students' performance or progress, all right? Now, students now are leading in front and uh, we are now the learners who will have to learn new ways, who will have to learn how to drive a new vehicle given to us at least until the end of the year. All right. So it is time for us now to transform our approach, transform our way. So uh, we are no longer restricted to face to face. We are no, no longer having to think of how to do it uh, face to face way. And we transform our approach to make it digital, uh, digital, make it online, but at the same time, not to burden us uh, by having to learn so many tools. Okay, uh, for your information, my session today has no, uh, I won't be talking about any tools. Okay, uh, this is uh, strictly to uh, of uh, instructional design or learning design approach. Okay, so uh, we have no time to learn new tools. Uh, I think tools have been shared many times before. Okay, and to introduce more tools would be adding more towards confusion of which one to choose. All right. Okay, uh, basically this is what uh, I'm going to talk about uh, today, okay? This is based on uh, constructive alignment and how we transform your content. Let me just, uh, how we transform your content here with the right learning outcome. And then from this learning outcome, you design your learning and teaching activity for your students as well as the learning assessment task for your students. Uh, you via the platform of your choice okay so let me just start uh one by one and number one once you have your content uh i'll go straight to this right uh because i have until 12 if i'm not mistaken yes dr mira okay uh number one that you need to ask yourself is with your content, what is it that you want them to learn? Okay, uh, basically we are talking about the learning outcome of your content of your course or of the subject that you are teaching, all right? So with this learning outcome, okay, I'm sure everyone is familiar with learning outcome already at this stage, okay? And the learning outcome for each session of your online learning with your student must be clearly defined and rationalized to the students. Uh, you have to bear in mind, you are not there 24 seven with your students uh, to explain to them uh, what, they are, what they need to do, 
okay what they are trying to uh what you are trying to get them to do how it, so everything has to be clearly defined clearly rationalized to your students okay um i've seen many examples where instructors they upload content for example video and then that's it no clear instruction no clear definition on what to do with the video yes video is understood to be watched but what happened after they watch what do they do upon completing the activity okay all that must be clearly defined for online learning okay and what you need to do is to design your students learning experience okay uh, but number one you must know first what they can do and what they cannot do and you have to find the mid ground okay not all students has equal access to technology okay to internet okay some students might have high bandwidth some students might have a low or no connection at all so how do you deal with this so you need to find a mid middle ground okay when you look at tools there are so many tools and uh, all the tools a lot of tools out there are very exciting and teachers can be very excited to learn and to share with their students but you have to be practical okay uh, in my opinion uh, you, you cannot uh, i will talk about the tools in a short while but number one you have to be practical with your students with yourself as well okay do you have the capacity do you have the capability to deliver uh, how you want it to be delivered okay and also you need to be reasonable okay with uh, your content okay you cannot expect students uh, to sit in front of for example your class normally is 3 hours right okay and you cannot expect students to sit in front of the computers uh, for 3 hours and focus okay if they are in your class yes you can monitor you can see who's playing with phone who's not uh, paying attention who's paying attention yes but session like this i wouldn't know right some of you are uh, not shown on video for example so how would i know you are listening or you are watching right that is one good example so we are learning from this experience so that we can deliver the same or better experience to your students as well all right uh, so be reasonable in designing your content in designing your outcome restrict uh, chunk your content to bite size okay uh, one session for example if you are using say google classroom one session try not to make it more than uh, one or two uh, learning outcome okay so it has to be bite size it has to be easily digested by your students okay uh, why uh, for example applications like youtube like uh, instagram like tiktok is so famous these days because all their content is bite size okay it takes only uh, 2 3 minutes to watch and then people move to the next thing okay that is the trend now so you cannot have long lectures for example if normally in your 3 hours class you teach for 2 hours and students do activities for 1 hour okay the same experience cannot be transferred online if not uh, students won't get the same experience or it will be a very uh, unreasonable experience for your students okay so what you need to do uh, during this stage at this stage is to chunk your content to bite size so uh, have for uh, you can call it episodes for your course have several uh, multiple episodes so each episode's one learning outcome that you need to deliver to your students all right and preparation at this stage will uh, normally take uh, the, uh, a lot of your instructor's time your time okay during this ertl at this time okay so this is where this is the stage where a lot of preparation is needed okay but the good thing is with online learning preparation for this is one time once you uh, you have carefully prepared you have uh, carefully uh, designed your students learning experience the same package can be reused okay for the next uh, class and many classes to come only you need to recheck and uh, maybe uh, touch up a bit here and there of your content okay so this is the stage we, we have three stages just now 
uh, learning outcome, uh, assessment, as well as activities. So this is a stage where it will take the most of your time. Okay. Uh, wait, I think I missed one. Okay. Most important is in preparing your students' learning experience, you must aim for autonomous learning. Okay. Uh, which means students learn on their own with minimal monitoring. Okay. You, you cannot be monitoring for if you are teaching four to five classes. Okay. Uh, it will be a disaster to monitor them online 24 seven, okay? So you need to create, you need to design a learning experience that uh, is aiming for autonomous learning where you monitor them minimally, they do the rest, they self-learn self on their own and you just check their outcome, their progress, right? So this is what is uh, what we are aiming for, all right? Next is, okay, if you're familiar with Bloom Taxonomy, okay, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of Bloom Taxonomy and I'm sure what I've been talking about uh, until now, many of you have come across also before and this could be a refresher course for you as well, all right? But in, if you were to refer a lot of our, uh, our lessons plans are referring to a lot of Bloom uh, action verbs in Bloom Taxonomy, okay? So I will share these slides in a short while. You can refer to this diagram on how to properly uh, plan your learning outcome for your students, all right? And once you have prepared your learning outcome, you know what do you need, your, what do you need your students to deliver, okay? You ask yourself the next question. How are you going to assess the learning? How are you going to assess? How are you going to know that they already achieved what you need them to achieve? That they have reached or they have achieved the learning outcome. Okay. And it goes back to the task, assessment task that you give them. Okay. At the end of this session, I will show one a demonstration of how to combine all three. Uh, number one, when you are preparing your assessment task, you need to know your tools and simplify your tools. Okay, I've got uh, several questions. I will uh, attend to the questions during the Q&A, yeah? But you, just, you can just keep on asking questions, don't worry, okay? Uh, okay, coming back to this, uh, you need to know your tools and simplify your tools. This is for your own sake as well, okay? I know since the day we started with this online learning, uh, a lot of people, a lot of workshop has been conducted on tools. Okay, it, uh, meeting tools alone, there are so many people are pushing uh, your way, Zoom, uh, Google Meet, uh, uh, Webex, uh, what else? Uh, Skype, there are so many that you, you can choose from. Okay, but you don't have to choose all. Choose one or two tools, know how to use it to the max, to the maximum capac uh, capacity of the tools and use that with your students, okay? And don't push to your students also too many tools that will confuse them, okay? So, uh, if you are good to me, in my humble opinion, if it takes WhatsApp or Telegram for you to achieve, for you and your students, for your students to achieve the linear outcome, yeah, it could be just Telegram. It could be just WhatsApp. The only question that you need to ask is, at the end of it all, can you produce the evidence to show that they have learned, to show that they, uh, you have delivered? That's all. If you can do that, yep, yeah, by all means. Okay. Uh, a lot of people have been asking about ITATLIM as well. Okay, yes, I agree. ITATLIM is very, very uh, good. Uh, it is like a Swiss knife, okay, for teaching and learning. It has so many tools and so many things that you can do with ITATLIM, okay? But you have to consider also uh, what ITATLIM is and where uh, it is located, okay? Again, when you are looking at tools, 
find out what students can do, what they cannot do, you find the mid, uh, mid ground, all right? Uh, if you are familiar already with Italin, okay, uh, do the students have a strong connection to assess Italin? Okay, are they all familiar with Italin? Okay, you can start with a simple task on Italin first and show them what to do on Italin, okay? And then you progress to a more uh, complicated uh, uh, task for them, okay? And you have to be, in, in assessment, you have to be fluid and try not to be restricted by timetable. Okay, what I mean is, uh, for example, you want to assess them, you want to give them a quiz, okay? Let's take Italim again uh, as example. Okay, Italim, uh, for those who do not know, is located on our server on campus. Okay, so there are certain limits that uh, can handle traffic coming in or going out from Italim to outside, from outside coming in. Okay, so let's say if uh, one, uh, one kulia has uh, five departments and all the five departments has many, many uh, subjects, many classes going on at say 10 to 12. And all these classes at 10 to 12 want to do quiz on italing with your students. You can imagine the traffic, yeah? And that will definitely will crash. Uh, the, the, the circle, okay? So try not to be restricted by timetable. Be fluid. You can, uh, if you are using Atatlin, for example, you can schedule the quiz to be available the whole day, okay? But the time uh, allowed for students to take the quiz is one hour, for example, okay? One hour. So, but they are allowed to choose any of our for the whole day, for 24, set, for 24 hours of that day to take the quiz, all right? They still uh, can take the quiz at any time, at nine o'clock, at 10 o'clock, at 11 o'clock, but the only duration they have is one hour. Once they start the quiz, they will finish by one hour, okay? And you can randomize. Uh, some are saying that they could tell their friends of the question, they could tell, uh, they could screenshot, okay, their friend, uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, what do you call that, the questions and show it to their friends. Uh, this is where you have, uh, you have to work with your colleagues from the same department to prepare and share a question bank where you can take different questions and randomize it. So every time different students sit for the same quiz, different questions will appear. Okay, so they, they so that, there is no cheating, possibility of cheating to happen, all right? So uh, preparation, uh, it, it is quite a preparation, So, but it can be done. All this is to enable students to have fair access to if you, st uh, if you still want to do it that way, okay? Even for midterm, I see no problem, okay? It's just that you need to have multiple sets of questions and you can, uh, you allow them to go to take uh, for one whole day. All right. So you need to prepare a time frame and give students freedom to work within the time frame. Work with colleagues from the same department to prepare and share a question bank, uh, which later on the same question bank can be used to work uh, to to can be used for face to face session when we are out of this uh, pandemic. All right. Okay. And. Feedback on the assessment is highly crucial for students' progress because you are not you are not there uh, with them face to face to always comment to always uh, uh, give feedback on their uh, progress. So giving feedback on the assessment online is very crucial for them to know whether they have progress or not. That's why you have to be fluid. Okay, you can have okay. Let's say you have Zoom. Uh, session with your students for uh, three hours, for example, yeah, okay? And you cannot expect yourself to give feedback uh, of students' activity uh, within the same three hours. No, you cannot, 
Okay, that's why your uh, lesson has to be chunked, has to be bite-sized so that your feedback also can be simple and straight to the point. And later on to be calculated as you progress along till the end of the semester. Okay, and it will give time for you to breathe as well, especially for those who, have, who are teaching many hours. All right. Okay, once you have uh, prepared all that, uh, you need to also uh, ask yourself the last questions, which is what teaching and learning activity to deliver uh, the content, okay? So what is the learning and teaching activity that you need to prepare uh, for your students? Again, given the restriction that we have uh, to online, there are so many things that you can do online with online learning and teaching tools. You have, uh, Kahoot, you have uh, Quizzes, Quizlet, you have Padlet, you have, uh, uh, there are so many that are not coming to me now, okay? But whatever it is, ask yourself first, what are they going to learn, okay? So do, you, do, do they need to see? Do they need to listen? Okay, do they need to write? Okay, from these questions and this answer, you can decide what tools okay that you need to use okay for your lesson and simplify it okay straight to the point you cannot have too many steps especially with online learning okay straight to the point tell them this is the activity this is what they need to do and and uh straight to the point ask them to do this okay if you if you, let's say, if you upload a YouTube video to your iTatlim or to your Google Classroom, okay? So what do they do after they watch the video? That is most important. You cannot just upload the video and expect them to understand. Is YouTube video watch? Yes, understood. But after watching, okay, what do you need them to do? Okay, this is where instruction has to be very clear. Okay, watch the video uh, at, uh, above and after watching the video, answer the quiz and for example, please answer the quiz based on the video that you have watched. Okay, and uh, the language, uh, the instruction that you uh, put, that you write on your LMS, on your iTalib, on your Google Classroom also is very crucial. Okay, it has to be very detailed, it has to be very precise on what do they need to do with the lang uh, with the material, okay. Uh, simplify your resources as well. Chunk to bite size for easy dig digestions. If the YouTube video is too long, you can uh, cut short it. If it is your own lecture, you can chunk it to. Uh, I would recommend not more than three minutes for each video. Okay, for easy digestions. All right. If not, they will quickly lose interest after watching uh, us talking uh for more than five minutes okay even during face to face as well right okay and as i said instruction for each content must be very precise and very clear and leave no room for ambiguities okay uh i'm repeating uh what do they do after viewing each content, uh, sorry. Okay, so what do they do after viewing each content? So that, that is basically uh, uh, what you need to instruct them, give proper instruction, give proper, the wordings has to be very simple, very precise, very clear, okay, on what you do. Don't leave them hanging on what to do with the content that you uploaded. Uh, even if you upload PDF, or Microsoft Word document, still you need to have instruction, okay? What do, PDF is understood to be read, okay? But what to do after reading, what to reflect, okay? So all this has to be very clear as if you are talking to them, okay? Use speaking terms, speaking language when you are writing your instructions um, on your uh, platform of choice, okay? So let me give one example, one demonstration. Um, 
Okay, this is a demonstration of how to apply the constructive alignment um, for your online teaching and learning preparations. Okay, let's say that in your learning outcome, in your course outline, students has to demonstrate a skill. All right. Okay, I'm using my, my own course uh, as example. Okay, so uh, they have to demonstrate how to use a digital camera to take portrait photos, for example, yeah? And then you go to the teaching and learning activity. Okay, what is it that you want them to do? They need to see how it is done, how to use a digital camera to take portrait photos. So instructor, in this case, me, I have to demonstrate the skills via a step-by-step -step video to be uploaded to uh, LMS of your choice. So if you are using iTatlim, you can you will upload the video to iTatlim. If you're using Google Classroom, the video to Google Classroom, so and so, okay? But my suggestion would be if you are using video of your own or other any, or any other video not on YouTube, post it on YouTube first so that you will not burden the server, especially if you are using iTatlim, okay? So if you are using iTatlim, use a link to the video only for iTatlim so that you will not uh, uh, congest uh, the server, all right? So then this is the, the teaching and learning activity. Okay, they watch uh, how the skill is demonstrated by the instructor, okay, from the video. And then going back to the learning outcome, they have to demonstrate how to use a digital camera. So how do you assess that? Okay, so in my case, I will get my student to record their own step-by-step -step video and they upload the video with evidence of photos taken using the skill that they have learned. Okay, so that is the assessment that I'm, design, uh, I'm uh, assigning to my students, okay, uh, for this uh, demonstration. Okay, so again, if you're using iTatlim or uh, it is recommendable that they upload the video to YouTube and they just share the link of the YouTube video to iTatlim. All right. Oh, did I go too fast, Dr. Mira? It's good, it's good. Thank you. I'm, I'm collecting the questions we have been getting a okay. lot of questions from the chat as well as from YouTube. So, okay, I, so I have I'm several on this Google slide as well. Okay, sure, so sure. It's, it's a very simple step. Let, let, let me go back to um, the first slide okay, to show you how. All right. <clears throat> so we, you, start, you start with your content, okay? And you have your learning outcome, which is already available in your course outline. Then, given uh, that you have to be online, this is where you design your learning and teaching activity and your assessment task. This is interchangeable, yeah? Uh, it's not necessarily that you start with assessment task, okay? This is interchangeable, but uh, what you need to know, what you need to simplify for this ERTL is uh, the design of your student's learning experience. Okay, you have to check with your students first. You have to learn from your students where they are. Okay, a simple survey, a simple Google form will, will tell you uh, what kind of access they have, what kind of devices they have. Okay, especially if you have students from uh, multiple places from remote areas, Sabah, Sarawak, okay, uh, or any area in Semenanjung where internet connection is very low. So you need to be fair to all students, okay? And your content has to be bite-sized. Your content has to be clearly defined and rationalized, and it has to be made autonomous. So it will be of a minimal monitoring from your side, okay? And regarding tools also, uh, try as much as possible to go with asynchronous, which is uh, not at the same time, okay? Uh, I'm sure you, by now, you, a lot, many of you will be familiar with this term, synchronous versus asynchronous right synchronous is at the same time okay uh, not necessarily face to face but you are there with your students at the same time for example if you are using the uh, if you work together with your students on a google document right so 
you are at the same time synchronously working on the document with your student. Okay, can be done. All right. <clears throat> or you have Zooming session with your students at the same time. Yes, that is synchronous. <clears throat> but uh, given the limitation of bandwidth, network, and all, try as much as possible to go with the asynchronous so that you will give more time for your students to uh, assess your content or assess your assessment. And it will give you more time also to breathe throughout the day if you, have, if you are teaching too many uh, classes. <clears throat> and use tools that are <clears throat> as simple as possible that will work both for you and for your students regardless wherever they are, okay? Uh, repeating back what I said earlier, if it takes WhatsApp or Telegram for you to deliver the content, for you to assess, uh, Telegram now is a good choice, also very simple. They have a poll uh, function, they have quiz function, okay? The only question that you need to consider is at the end of the session, can you produce evidence, okay? For filing later on that you have done this and that, that's all. If you can do that, then that should be okay, all right? But try to simplify your tools, okay? Don't make it too complicated, especially, uh, first of all, for you and for your students, all right? If it takes traditional email, you are familiar with email, then so be it, all right? Okay, uh, tools these days, yes, are very exciting. Okay, uh, Quizlet, Quizzes, uh, Kahoot, uh, Ad Puzzle, for example, they are all very exciting. But the question is, can the student access that? If they all can access, then you can you can go crazy with tools, yes. But if not, you have to be reasonable, you have to be uh, uh, practical, okay? Okay, so, uh, we have come to the conclusion of the session, uh, which after this I will attend to Q&A. And just one thing that I would like to uh, stress upon uh, for this uh, session, for this webinar, is that what you are driving does not matter, okay? What matters are the passengers and the destination. If they can achieve the learning outcome that you set for them with evidence that shows they have learned and you give proper uh, validated assessment, yes, anything goes, okay? So don't, don't, don't be too restricted to certain tools, don't be too restricted to certain time frame, okay? If things can be done with evidence, with validation, then anything goes, okay? Even for mid, uh, midterm tests, I would say, okay? Because I know a lot of people are worried about midterm tests, uh, which normally done uh, at the same time with uh, many students, for example, okay, uh, take CELPAD, for example, where you have midterms, language courses where students, they are at, at, at one time, there could be more than 1,000 students sitting for midterm tests at the same time. And if that is to be done uh, via ITATLIN, for example, more than 1,000 students sitting for the same test, uh, that is highly impractical, okay? This is where you have to uh, give them a leeway. You have to give your students a time frame on how long they can do it. But the uh, test time is still, uh, if, it is, if it is three hours, three hours. But the time frame of doing, sitting for the test could be the whole day. All right? So that gives them more time, especially for the students who do not have access. Or, because you cannot guarantee that they will have access. Okay? Like just now, the best example, I did not expect for my line to got cut off, to get cut off, but it did, all right? So anything can happen, okay? So we need to give consideration. Uh, there must be a lot of buffering, okay, surrounding your design. Plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D, okay? Okay, so we have come now. Uh, 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 to the Q&A, I can see I have uh, quite a number of questions here. Uh, Dr. Mira, I will attend to the questions asked on this Google slide first, yeah? 
You can share. You can share. Okay. okay. All right. So, so uh, this is the first question I got. Uh, uh, no, no, that is not the first. Question. Google Meet and Zoom are high bandwidth to do uh, ERTL from Brother Dr. Swami. Um, yes, my friend. Um, it is. It is. Uh, and you you cannot ensure that all students has high uh, bandwidth, high internet connection to do Google Meet and Zoom. Okay, and that's uh, and Google Meet and Zoom is a tool for synchronous session. Okay, you want to meet your student face to face. So. Uh, once in, a, once in a while, you can try. If uh, you start the next semester, you can try the first week with Zoom or Google Meet. If you see that it is not practical, go with asynchronous. Go with something lighter. Go with something easier for your students to uh, do. Okay? Uh, Google Meet and Zoom is not a must. <clears throat> okay? It's just a good option. Sorry? Yes, if I can also share, uh, actually we do have a guidelines later on uh, that mm -hmm. uh, sort of uh, emphasize on how these tools can actually be used. So there, there are some steps. Uh, you have to ensure that all the students have access to the internet yes. and with a yep. certain bandwidth uh, capacity. Mm -hmm. uh, there are yep. link to check, there are link for the students to check the speed yes. uh, of yes. the internet. Right? So, Otherwise, uh, it will be very challenging for students to follow Correct. the yes. live sessions and expecting them mm -hmm. to not get cut off or not have internet yes. uh, mm -hmm. yeah, issues. So just in case there are some, as, as, as you mentioned earlier, just in case there are some students actually mm -hmm. live in the remote areas or mm -hmm. rural areas, with mm -hmm. it will be very challenging for them. Okay, yes, you. correct. Agree. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you test first with your students if it is practical or not. If not, you can find other options. A asynchronous option will be good. Okay, thank you, Dr. Mira. Assalamualaikum. Uh, Waalaikumsalam uh, uh, If we record our lecture using Zoom, for example, uh, uh -huh. and then we send the video to the student, maybe via YouTube or via YouTube link, for example. Does it require the same? Means that we are not doing a, a, a synchronous uh, video uh, meeting, but uh -huh. if we just record using Zoom and then share the video. Hmm. Does it if you want to, pr huh? sorry, require the same at the high bandwidth. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, if you want to pre-record your lecture, Zoom is not the only option. Okay, uh, Zoom is uh, first and uh, first of all, Zoom is for meant to be for a synchronous uh, meeting. That is the, the the main function of Zoom. So if you want to pre-record your lecture, you can just record. Uh, hold on. Uh, You can just record using your phone, okay, a video of you talking, and then upload that video to YouTube and give your students the link to the YouTube. As simple as that. Okay? Uh, because if you would... Can we, can we share our slide if we record, we have a uh, video record through phone? Can we ah, share? okay. The, the thing is, if you want to record using Zoom, you will require internet for Zoom to record. Okay, I would recommend uh, a tool that does not require internet, that does not require you to be connected while recording, such as Screencast or Matic. A free tool that you can download. Uh, I think, Dr. Mira, uh, have you had a session on Screencast or Matic or tools of similar nature? Yeah, we have. We have in the first year learning clinic, and we also mm, will yes. provide okay. that as part of the guidelines later on. So. Okay, that, that, that's good. So, uh, sister, you can use tools like that, a, a screencast tool to record you talking and to uh, screen, to record your screen and then that can be done offline, which does not require any internet connection. Once you have complete the recording, save the video and later on upload the video to YouTube and share the link with your students. So, this is what, uh, this is what I said by know your tool and simplify it. Okay, so you have to work. Uh, so find one that works best for you, then you go with that one. And 
Okay, I will go to the next question. Uh, Brother Hilal Udin asked about uh, the reading material. It has to be detailed. Uh, can you clarify on this, brother? Do we have Brother Hilal Udin in the house? Assalamualaikum. 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 No, actually, I was talking about that. Uh, you said that too many reading, uh, what do you call things, cannot be too loaded. But the reading materials has to be a detail, is it? Uh, that's what I was asking. Uh, yes, yes. That, that, that one is okay. Uh, you can upload, like, if you have, for example, uh, you have an ebook to be shared with your students, yeah? Or a PDF of many pages. You can upload that, no problem. But uh, the activity, the assessment that you need to prepare for your student has to be chunked. So you cannot have, like for example, you get your students to read the whole thing in three hours and then later on write an essay on it. So, uh, or you did a, you do a quiz on it and then that will be, uh, especially if you do an online quiz, that will be a bit impractical for your students. But to upload a reading material, ebook or PDF, uh, that is not, uh, that is no problem. You can just upload it to your LMS, to ITAKLIM or, <clears throat> or anything mm -hmm. of that nature. Okay, thank you. That's that. That's that. okay. Thank you, brother. Okay, the next question is uh, okay. Uh, you, I think, uh, you, brother uh, Elaudin, you answered your question also here. Sorry. Mm. Interactive session could only uh, if you plan to do a Q and A based on what students read. Yeah, that that kind of uh, uh, activity is okay. Okay, for example. You you have a Q and A session based on the topic, uh, based on the reading material provided. Then that shouldn't be a problem. Okay. Then next is Sister Nurul Wahida, uh, pre-recorded lectures or live lectures via Zoom, for example. I would rec uh, recommend pre-recorded. Why? Uh, due to bandwidth issue. That if uh, upon checking first, you need to check first with your students where they are. Are they capable or not? to be uh, in class via Zoom? Are they all capable? If they can, yes, by, why not? It will be a better uh, option. If not, go with pre-recorded lectures, okay? Uh, better for them, okay? And less frustrating for you as well. If they keep got, uh, if they keep get connect, uh, disconnected during the session, yeah? Okay, uh, Sister Murni. Okay, uh, are you with us? During the course alignment process, if we have to change them, how do we manage the change? Uh, can you clarify on this? Okay, um, if we, during when uh, when we are doing the course alignment, right? If we mm -hmm. found that certain outcome. Um, perhaps that we cannot deliver through uh, online and we have mm -hmm. to change those outcome or any parts of the course mm -hmm. outline for this matter because we have mm -hmm. to break down a lot of um, content, right? So, mm -hmm. um, do we have to go for the normal process or we can just inform our department that we are doing this and that will be okay? Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Sister Morni. Okay, um, uh, to me, as long as you do not change the learning outcome in the course outline, it's fine. Okay. Uh, the changes, if the changes is only about the activities and the uh, assessment tasks given for each activity, that is fine. You can change them here, uh, then and there. If it requires you to change the learning outcome, then you have to go back to your department and check uh, for validation again. Okay. Uh, so, as long as you keep to the learning outcome within the course outline, that is okay. Okay, and uh, I think your your head of department can clarify on this as well. Okay, because uh, if you were to change too many of the learning outcomes in the course outline, then it will require a re resubmitting the course outline, right? Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, from Barahila again. Uh, randomizing the qu quiz question. Um, I cannot see the question. It's good. Is that about to maintain the? Okay. It it depends on the type of questions also. Okay. 
That's why you need to work with everyone from the same department, okay, to come up with a question bank of different difficulty levels and that can be used uh, randomly and still maintain the same, okay. And uh, the, the, the trick is how to avoid students congesting the system at the same time. If the system that you use, for example, Google Classroom, which is not, uh, I was referring to specifically Aitaklim just now to randomize the quiz question, right? If the system is not on campus, not on our server, for example, Google, uh, if you use, if you do quiz using Google Form, for example, they are on Google server, which is strong enough to handle uh, heavy traffic, then you, you have no questions of randomizing, uh, uh, giving a bigger time frame, okay? You can just do it at the same time. You can give the students three hours to sit for the quiz on Google Form, for example, then uh, their server can handle it, okay? Uh, that's what I said by knowing your tools. If your tools can handle it, then you can go the normal way. If not, you have to find ways to make it fair to your to each and every students, okay? I hope that answers your questions, brother. Yeah, thank you. Okay, welcome. Okay, Sister Hafiza, for experience-based teaching activities, uh, field visits, any suggestion? Wow. <laughs> uh, we still have field visits during this corona time? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's, I'm not that, sure. Uh, <laughs> that's why, that's the problem. Yeah, that's the problem, that's Shukri, because um, we have things like factory visit, you know, uh, hospital, mm. district visit, that kind of thing. So, what is your mm -hmm. best, I mean, a suggestion for the best way? I can only think about like pre-recorded video kind, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. but do you have any other suggestion? Uh, I think we are now very restricted to what uh, KKM and uh, the, the government is deciding for us yes. for, uh, for this uh, matter. I think that one, we have to wait and see what, uh, what uh, opportunity that we have to go back to field visits. As of now, I think field visits are closed. <laughs> no, unless, but if you can do sorry, sorry. any suggestion to replace that of course it's not it's not going to be field visit but how to mm -hmm. replace that maybe not of the same quality but um mm, something okay. that can not to replace but you know mm -hmm. okay uh field visit it, it can be a virtual uh, field visit oh, okay, okay? Mm -hmm. maybe you yourself or one or two students or staff uh to work with the company, to work with factory, hospitals and whatnot, to go and record video of the place of what you want them to see and then you can pre-record that and upload that for them to see and uh, uh, view it. Okay, as of now, mm -hmm. that would be yeah. another alternative for you to do it. Record a video of a uh, field visit by not so many people, maybe yourself and mm -hmm. uh, a cameraman and then you give uh, explanation on what this is, what that is, mm -hmm. and then you, you record it and upload it as a video and then they can have mm -hmm. a virtual field visits. That would be a, be a, a best the best okay. option for now. Since we are a bit relaxed okay. on the MCO, then I think you as the instructor can go out and do the video, but uh, a bit of time, a okay. bit time consuming. Lah. Okay, <laughs> okay, sure, thanks <laughs> doctor. Okay, yes, thank you. Uh, uh, this is a suggestion, I, I guess. PowerPoint also can record lectures. Yes, I agree. You can also use PowerPoint to record lectures. Uh, okay, do I have more questions? Uh, okay, Dr. Mira, uh, those are all the questions that I have for uh, Google Slides. Can I have the questions from your side? Uh, sure, sure. Um, but just want to comment on the recording your uh, video, uh, your audio in the PowerPoint. Okay, so I think everybody knows that PowerPoint, when you save a file, uh, the because the image and whatnot, the file size is very big, very huge. Mm. So uh, now you add audio to it, it's going to be really huge. So please mm -hmm. check the size of the file. The reason why we yes. record using screencast or matic or uh, mm -hmm. PowerSoft is that um, because we, there, there's a compression, file compression. So it will not be as big as you are sending the original PowerPoint slide. So the, that, that's the reason why uh, we opt for 
another tools for screen recording rather than using PowerPoint. If you can yep. ensure that your file size is reasonable, by all means feel free. But otherwise, look, um, have a look at some other tools that facilitate the same thing, but uh, have a smaller file size. Right. Thank you, Dr. Shukri. And let me just go through the questions from what I've collected from the chat. So uh, there's one question on the whether the teaching has to always be verbal lecture recording. So what do you think, Dr. Shukri? Has all topics no. requires verbal recording? No, uh, no. I would say that you can uh, use multiple approaches to your teaching, to delivering your content. It doesn't have to be verbal all the time. It doesn't have to be video all the time. You can use, uh, there's, there are tools out there you can use today to deliver your content, like uh, Ad Puzzle, for example, a video tool that you can take any video, any uh, YouTube videos or your own video and uh, create a quiz out of it. You can use infographics. You can use animations. Okay, it takes a bit of learning for you to know how to use them, okay? But uh, basically, you can um, you are not restricted to only verbal or video option, okay? You can uh, uh, have several different approaches so your students are not bored. You can use podcasts if you are comfortable with podcasts. A podcast is just audio only, okay? So it depends on uh, your creativity to make it more engaging, to make it more lively for your students. Thank you, Dr. Mira. Thank you. Uh, there's another question on the bite size. Uh, what do we mean, but what do you mean by bite size? Uh, and um, is it like mm -hmm. mind mapping style or of the lecture notes? So there's one question on uh, how do we define bite size learning? Okay, uh, bite size learning here is not to push uh, too big a content or too long a content to your student at one time. Okay, for example, on your uh, iTag link, for example, you have you have, you 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 break it down to weeks, for example, yeah, uh, week one until week fourteen. Okay, so uh, for each week, for example, you enter the class for three hours, and during the three hours, you teach for. You give lectures for two hours, for example, and you can you imagine uploading the same two hours to iTaklim for your students to watch and listen? Okay, can you guarantee all of your students will be sitting down and uh, watching your lecture for the two hours? Honestly, I won't. <laughs> okay, so you have to chunk the content like that, for example, Okay, into bite size. Maybe a two hours lecture can be uh, broken down into uh, mini videos or mini content that you can give them uh, at different times for them to digest. Okay, part by part. Okay, so for each part, also you have one question, for example. Okay, let's say you have one hour video, you break it down into. Uh, uh, four videos of 15 minutes, for example. That is still a bit too long. I would just recommend not more than five or three minutes, okay? So for each video, you have one question to check their understanding, okay? And they, at, at their own time, at their own pace also, can easily digest uh, each mini video or mini lecture, okay? Individually and easily, right? Uh, this is the same concept or the same model used by YouTube by TikTok, by Instagram, that makes them uh, platforms that are so famous nowadays uh, for youngsters because of this bite-sized content. Okay, I was talking about specifically the content that you did, you use uh, with your students. Thank you, Dr. Mira. Thank you. So maybe if I can just add a bit on that bite-sized learning. So maybe we can look at the topic for that week, for example, and then we look at the subtopics, right? So that subtopic yes, could yes. be we can bite size that subtopic uh, rather than Correct. covering the whole topic that one. Yes. Uh, and as long as you. Uh, yeah. It, it doesn't work. Yeah. yeah, so it doesn't have to, and all those sub subtopics doesn't have to be our recording. Could be, we can curate information or we can curate some yes. materials from 
Correct. Uh, YouTube, yeah. Or some other readings. Uh, that's actually okay. what I highlighted by you earlier, isn't it? That white science can actually be the, the, a combination of things, right? Correct. The trick is to give varieties to your students, a buffet of content that they can choose from at their own pace, at their own time, given this uh, new approach, that, uh, new norm, uh, the new normal that we are heading towards. Yeah. So we cannot think uh, from face-to-face -face perspective anymore when we prepare our content for online viewing. So we have to uh, give them several uh, options, uh, give them a variety, uh, give them a buffet of content on the table for them to pick and choose at their own convenience, at their own time, as long as at the end of the time frame for the whole semester, they achieve the learning outcome. As to when they do it, where they do it, you give them freedom. Okay? Thank you, Dr. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, I have my teacher here. Um, I'm so honored. My yeah. Sifu, Prof. Jamal Abdul Rahman, is here in the session. And he asked, <laughs> is there any guide on the suitable size for online material? If you are referring to Aitak Lim, uh, actually, we kept uh, upload size profile as uh, for, for lecturers, uh, 100 megabytes. For students, 20 mm -hmm. megabytes for per files. The reason is that because when you uh, uploading files, it actually uh, put a burden on the uh, on the traffic, as what highlighted by Dr. Shukri yes. earlier. So that's yes, why we correct. The file size. Uh, so that 100 megabyte is sufficient to one is sufficient to uh, upload one uh, video, which consists about uh, one video durations about mm -hmm. uh, 20 minutes. Okay, so 20 minutes video duration is about uh, 100 megabyte, actually less than 100 megabyte. But uh, again, uh, because of the attention span, which is limited in uh, online, so we, Dr. Shukri uh, highlighted earlier, maybe we can reduce the video uh, duration to something like three minutes, is that right, Dr. Shukri? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just to, not only for the file size sake, but also for the attention uh, span for the students. I yes, correct. Mm. Yeah. And also, Dr. Mira, um, if it is video per se, I would recommend uploading the video to YouTube. Uh, you can hide it from the public if you want, uh, if you're not comfortable for sharing with uh, the whole world, and you just share the link of the video with your students. So that will not burden our own server for ITAT link, for example. Okay, so that is one trick of doing it. Uh, and if it is other files that is huge in size, uh, as long as you are the staff of IIUM, you have unlimited Google Drive uh, storage. Okay, you can upload as many uh, files as possible as long as we subscribe to, uh, as long as IIUM subscribe to Google. Okay, and then you just share the link to the file with your students again. Okay, so this will not burden uh, the server uh, if you are using Lim again. All right, thank you, Dr. Mira. Uh, thank you. Do you mind to answer two more questions? I still have. Yeah, yeah, sure. Questions. No problem. Assalamualaikum, Dr. Shukri. Uh, yes, yes. Welcome, okay. Sufyan from Kuantan. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, yes. I, I yes. ask uh, how to handle the on the uh, like essay uh, type of assessment. Like for example, my my topics all full with the uh, calculation method of calculation and uh, drawing the chemical structures. So I I have to, to, to test the student. So they, they, they need to know how to write. That, that's the answer, the answer type. So if, mm -hmm. how, how to handle this, this kind of question? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Sufyan. Okay, uh, number one, uh, one question for you. If you, uh, if, I mean, not a question. If you trust your students, if you think that they are who they are online, okay, uh, usually what I would do is, uh, there are two options that I would do for this. If it is an essay question, okay, I would get them to, to, to write on a Google Doc, okay, and they have to add me as collaborator to the Google document mm -hmm. so that I can, in, in the Google Class, because I use Google Classroom. So in the Google Classroom, <clears throat> I can uh, immediately evaluate their essay, okay, from the Google Doc that they shared with me, and uh, I am one of the collaborators in the Google Doc, okay? For any drawings uh, or diagram that you need them to prepare, you need them to see preparing it, if you prefer for them to prepare uh, in real time with you, 
watching what they are doing, I use uh, Jamboard by Google as well. Uh, let me just write it here. Uh, let me just open. Uh, okay. So the, the two options that I was talking about is number one is Google Doc. Okay. Add as, as collaborator. Or you can prepare the Google Doc on Google Classroom, okay? And you give them the link and they will be automatically you are as the owner of the document. And for drawings, for diagram, I use Jamboard. Okay. Uh, then you can see, you can see uh, them drawing at the same time. Okay, let me just show you one example. I, th I think many in Kuantan would appreciate this because you have a lot of diagram uh, uh, drawings that you need uh, for your students to prepare or calculations that you need to see. Okay. Okay, Jamboard is a, oh, not, not this one, sorry. Okay, this is the one. For example, okay, let me just give a very short uh, demonstration on how to use Jamboard. Uh, Dr. Sufian, can I have your email? Okay, I can write your email. M S U F I A N. M S U F I A N. Is that right? M S U F I A N. Yes. Uh, uh, Muhammad Sufian Muhammad Nawi, yeah? Yes, uh, yes. Yeah, okay. C can you check your email and open this? Uh... Oops, sorry. I need to give you access so that you can read. Okay. Okay, I've sent you the link for collaborator. So, <clears throat> This is like a, a digital whiteboard, okay, or drawing board. So you can just draw anything on it, okay. Write calculation on it, okay, diagram. Okay, Dr. Sufian, can you write something? Can you draw something on it? Wait, okay, anything? Yes, yeah, anything. Uh, I haven't used it. You have to go to pin it. Okay, here you, you see there are tools here on the left side of the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can I can see you here now. You are you are, yeah, there you are. Yeah, I, I'm I'm drawing the, the star. Yes. <laughs> <This is> star. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, all right. So this is one option that's even that you can use if you okay. you can see uh, your students drawing in real time. Uh, okay. okay? Uh, or if you prefer not in real time, you can just add them here, share as collaborator, and maybe uh, then you can come back to it later to see what they have uh, what they have done with the the board. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh, all right. Welcome. Okay, Dr. Mira. Okay. Um, yeah, the two questions uh, was on. Okay. Um, Okay, so so when <laughs> I think this is the same questions uh, actually asked almost on every session. Uh, sorry, on sorry, Zoom, can you repeat? Yeah, uh, it's actually maybe the question is to CPD because every everybody keep asking about oh, the Zoom license. Okay. <laughs> the Zoom license. <laughs> okay. Uh, we, no, we don't provide Zoom license. Uh, actually, the university only has a few license and distributed only to a few offices. For mainly for meetings and training purposes, but not for teaching and learning. So for teaching and learning, I would recommend maybe something that is uh, available as part of Google Suite. We do have Google Meet, but again, having said that, 
uh, please consider about the bandwidth and whatnot. Okay, so there are, there are uh, free and available uh, tools that you can actually use if you need synchronous session. Yeah, uh, I think, on, can I add yeah? something to that, Dr. Mira? Sure, sure. Can I add something sure. to that? Uh, I think the, the issue here is because we are still thinking of having face-to-face -face session. Okay, uh, we need to slowly break away from that mindset. Uh, you can try Zoom for the, uh, let's say the coming semester that is coming to us, uh, you can try Zoom, see if it works, but slowly now you have to break away. You have to unsee face-to-face, okay? How would you create a different or a new learning experience for your students uh, by having minimal interaction face-to-face? -face? So more asynchronous is uh, recommended. Preparing materials in a different way rather than a normal lecture. Okay, it's a bit of work if you have if you are not used to it. But once you prepare everything as a package, the same package can be reused many many times with your future students. Okay, should we have to go to this online uh, approach again? Okay, thank you, Dr. Mira. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question is. How do we make practical session online, uh, especially the session that usually conducted face to face for the practical, uh, maybe the courses that is very practical? How would you uh, suggest on turning it into online session? Uh, online there are few. There are few things that we need to consider for practical sessions. Okay, uh, if the practical sessions can be done by the students themselves on their own, without the need of having a technician or without the need of having uh, equipment in the lab, okay, then they can just record their practical, okay, and then uh, submit it as a video to the instructor with their face shown, of course, okay, as evidence. Okay, you need to set what kind of video you want. You need to tell them, uh, record your practical session. I want to see you in the video, not just your hand, okay? So they might need some help on that, but uh, uh, soon they will get used to it. So that's why I said instruction has to be very precise, very clear, okay? As part of the assessment, okay? If you prepare a rubric for it, it has to be mentioned in the rubric. You have to give them the rubric early on so that they know what they need to achieve in the assessment, okay? If not, they will question, hey, you didn't tell us this. Now you want us to do this. Okay, they will question, okay? Everything has to be precise and defined early on so that they will, they will be very clear of what to do, okay? So in term, going back to the practical session, they can record a video of them doing the activity that you want them to do, okay? So uh, if it requires you to watch them doing it in real time, you have to uh, get them to, to uh, set an appointment with you for a Zoom session maybe for them for you to see them doing it in real time. So there are two options, either real time or pre-recorded uh, for practical session. Okay, I hope that answers the question, Dr. Mira. Yes, yes. All right. Thank you so much. Okay, so I think I would uh, I would like to open the session a few more minutes. We, we still have about five more minutes if anybody would like to sure. unmute your microphone and jump in. If you want to ask the questions directly to Dr. Shukri, please just unmute your microphone. Uh, hello. Mm -hmm. yes, uh, yes, may I look at slide number 13 again? Number 13, hold on, yeah. Yeah. Here you go. Oh, okay. Let me. Let me, uh, let me share with you the link to this slide in uh, Zoom chat so that everyone can access. Hold on, yeah? Okay. Thanks so much. Do we have people outside of the university, Dr. Mira? Um, yes, yes, we do. So I I'll give, I'll make email. it public then? That will be nice place, yes. Uh, for viewing, if, if I allow to edit then... <laughs> <laughs> For me only, thank you. Okay. Hello. Let me share. Okay. 
Okay, that's the link. Uh, everyone received the link? Hmm? Not yet. Okay. I don't... Oh, no. oh, hold on. Not yet. Let me just stop sharing for a while. Okay. There you go. That's the link. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'll share to uh, the audience in YouTube. something yes Dr. Shakur. Assalamu alaikum. thank you very much Dr. Well, Shakur, for your simple clear and useful presentation Alhamdulillah. Um, I, I wanted to just ask a couple of things the first one um, do you recommend scheduling um, the content and the activities ahead of time and then it sort of opens up at the designated time or do you think it's better to do it as you're going along uh, I think a pre-scheduled uh, se session for each content would be good as long as you give uh, quite a huge time frame for them to assess. And, uh, and also you need to uh, know for what reason you want to restrict the access to the content. Uh, if, if it is not uh, an issue, you can just open it up for the whole semester for the students. If you feel the need to restrict the access to the content, I think it will be good also to be fair to all students, especially to those who have low bandwidth uh, or not uh, not a uh, good connection, to have a huge, a uh, bigger time frame for them to access. That would be okay. So what you're saying is you could actually hopefully de 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 design and devise everything ahead of time, upload yeah. everything, and they can just go through it at, at their own speed and time. That the would be thing. a lot better, brother. Yes. Yeah. Right. It's like you're giving them a magazine to read and they can read the whole magazine at their own pace and time. The reason I ask is because I thought perhaps as you're going along, things might change, problems might happen, and you could then sort of modify if you're doing it uh, week by week. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that is what I mean by uh, being fluid. Okay, you cannot, be, you cannot be too rigid to restrict it to, okay, I've, I've done this A, B, C. You have to follow A, B, C, no. Sometimes it happens D first. So you have to be fluid, you have to go with the flow. As long as at the end, the LO meant for the course is achieved. Yes. Second question was, um, do you recommend, or, uh, or, or is it okay to do group work and group assignments, or do you think it's better to be individual? Mm -hmm. At this time, I think until we know for sure, uh, that, that, that is actually a very good question, Brother Shako, uh, because I think this is a very good testing ground for us uh, not just us individually, but also us, the university, of what we are capable of doing and what we are not capable of doing. So this is the data that we will get to know for sure what we need to improve, okay, what we are already good at. Okay, so at this moment, the way I see it is not highly recommended to use group work because of the issue with uh, the whole country is going well for e uh, online learning, Okay, I think if you can just, uh, can be done, group work can be done, but we are now at the mercy of the internet. Yes. Okay, and if the internet can be- to communicate. Yes, yes, yes. If they can produce evidence of how they are collaborating, uh, a, record, a recorded session of Zoom session, for example, then by all means, for sure. But right. we need to have a very clear mechanism on that. Yeah, I mean it's it's difficult enough in a face to face class, isn't it? Let alone yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let alone um, off, off, last online. question is quite detailed. Are you aware that can we schedule material on Padlet? 
Padlet. I has been I quite some time since I used Padlet. <laughs> Doctor is big on it. She likes it, and I saw her putting her materials. But I wondered whether uh -huh. we can schedule it for a later time or not. I don't know. And uh, where are you putting your Padlet on? Uh, I mean, I haven't really been using it myself much. I was. What, what do you mean? Okay, if the Padlet is to be shared as a direct link to the Padlet for your students, then I'm not quite sure on that. I need to check on what's the latest uh, uh, functionalities of Padlet. But if you were to share the link of the Padlet, of your Padlet on iTalim or on Google Classroom, then you can schedule that. Ah, you can schedule when it appears on your iTalim, when it appears on your Google okay. Classroom. That's yeah, a good that idea. can be done. Okay, yeah. thanks. Yeah, no problem. Welcome. Jazakumallah khaira. So do we have any other questions? Uh, we're almost at the end of our session. So I would like to open one more question, one last question. Dr. Shukri, can I ask one simple question? Yes. Uh, you know that in social science, we have presentations. And Correct. at the beginning of the session, we, we already set up the groups and everything. Now, how do we handle it with this emergency right now? Do we replace this with uh, any other test or should we go ahead with this presentation? I don't okay. know how to handle if, this. <laughs> okay, if you want to be, if you want, uh, I think this one, uh, 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 students are very creative with this one. Sometimes my students teach me a lot more than what I teach them in terms of uh, technologies these days, okay? Let's say you want them to present as a group Right. Okay, of the content, okay? You can, right. uh, from the same uh, material, right? Right. Yes, okay. We, we give them record. topic, yeah. Yes, you give them topic per group, for example. So right, what they right. can do is, uh, they can record their part and give to the mm -hmm. next friend to record their part and give to the next friend to record their part. At the end of the, of, uh, of the session, they combine all the clips and okay. save it as one video to be submitted to you. Ah, okay. So yeah. that's one solution. The, yeah, the other, yeah. the, mm -hmm. I don't know about the experience with Google Classroom. I actually find mm -hmm. it very, very user-friendly. And I it carried is, out, yeah. yeah, and I carried out a mini survey among my classes. Our classes in social science, I mean, political science, so the class size is very big. But in the mm -hmm. postgraduate class, Alhamdulillah, they have actually all responded very positively. To Google Classroom. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. yeah. So, so I can use that, right? It not, it would not really create any problem for the bandwidth in our university, right? Oh uh, no, it is outside of the okay. uh, university right. server. Yeah. Okay. I find it personally very user friendly. Me too, actually. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you for a wonderful session. Okay. Thank you very. Yeah. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Alaikum okay. Salam. Okay. Thank you so much for all participants, for the questions and comments, as well as uh, suggestions. Inshallah, uh, what we have learned today will be very beneficial uh, for how we overcome our anxieties in starting our session on 1st of June, inshallah. So uh, whatever tools that have been covered in the past, I think uh, today you should uh, reflect and again strategize to which extent those tools might be beneficial and useful for your course. Uh, the bottom line, we really encourage not to use all of the tools that has been covered. Uh, it will be very <laughs> challenging for the students to, to use all of them. Uh, so limit perhaps to a maximum of three. Um, if possible, if we have any tools that basically can cover everything, uh, let's minimize. Okay? So because remember, the students is not taking only taking your course. They're also taking other courses. So if we have a lot of tools that they have to master, then it will deviate from the actual learning, uh, rather than learning about your topics, they will be learning about the tools instead. So, which is, I think that will be very uh, challenging for them. So, inshallah, I think Dr. Shukri has put everything nicely. Uh, and uh, for me, it's very insightful. I, I'm sure everyone find it as is, find it, find it useful as well. So, I would like to thank you, Dr. Shukri. Mashallah, it's a very, very nice session. Very uh, most welcome. Thank you. For all of us. <laughs> And we have a lot of uh, viewers in YouTube as well. For those who actually miss any 
session today or you couldn't really get connected to other sessions, you can still view the session in YouTube. Uh, inshallah, it is available 24-7. So just in case you want to refresh whatever Dr. Shukri has covered today, feel free to uh, go to the YouTube channel and then view the session again. Uh, so as Dr. Mulahir, Dr. Shukri, Barakallah, may Allah bless you and family, especially in the month inshallah. of Ramadan. Allah makes it easy Amen. through all these uh, difficult times, inshallah. And to all of the participants, Zakumullah uh, Hayr, thank you so much for participating. May this be the beginning of our strength and barakah of the knowledge, especially in the month of Ramadan. Uh, barakallah fikum. Uh, and let's end this with a stick of water. Subhanakallah ma bihamdik. Ashtuallah ilaha ila anta. Astaghfirullah wa bilaik. Zakumullah Hayr again, once again. Uh, and stay safe. Thank you, Dr. Mira. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.